Hi, this is Minister Gale. This is week 12 of the 23 lessons of Learn the 22 Letters of the Hebrew Alphabet. This week we are going to cover Kaf, Chaf, the letter K and KH. This is week 12, covering the letters for the K and the Kaf. We will have the Hebrew letter review, Hebrew words of the week, and alphabet chart review. This is Minister Gale, author and teacher of this section of the Learning Basic Hebrew Virtual Classroom 2020. This book is going to be on the modern letters of the Aleph Tetav Hebrew alphabet. There are three excellent sources for Strong's Concordance. The www.esword.net, wblueletterbible.org, and the kingsbible.com. At the end of this session, there is the video where you can look up and see on the Strong's Concordance that I created. If you go to YouTube and type in the address at the bottom there, will take you to a small video on the Strong's Concordance lookup and how to add it to your cell phone and to your laptop. The first letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Aleph. Aleph. It has the value of one. And it's always written as a mark only. It will not be written as an A or an E or an I. It is only written as a mark or an apostrophe in the word. Sometimes they have it in, sometimes they don't. This is where the letter A came from, but it is not the letter A in Hebrew. It is for strong or ox. And the meaning of it is first. The second letter in the Hebrew alphabet is for bet, if you have a dot, or vet, pronounced as a vet, V in Victoria, if there is no dot. The original word looked like this, a Bedouin home or tent. So this is the letter B with a dot. The letter V, pronunciation only, if there's no dot. So if the word has this letter in it with no dot, it's written as a B as in bet, but pronounced as a V in Victoria. With the dot, it's a B. Without the dot, it's written as a B, but pronounced as a V. Pronounced as a V. So here's a Hebrew word to demonstrate. The Hebrew word for COVID This has a hard sound of K, but it's pronounced as a hard C in English. So it's K with a dot. This is the vowel for O. This is the letter for B in Hebrew, but pronounced as a V in Victoria. This is the letter E in Hebrew, but pronounced as an I in English, and a D in Hebrew. The next letter is Gimel. The I is pronounced like an E, and this is for the letter G, the four inch high heel, which is the foot lifted up. It can be spelled with two M's or one M, both are correct, but it's for the letter G. It has a value of three. It's the third letter, G, Gimel. Dalit, this is for Dalit, D, door. It will have a little edge on the back of it there, so you know that's the difference between that and other letters. The value of four is for the door. In 2000 BC, it looked like this, and it went to a triangle. So that's the portal or door or opening to the sunlight for the Egyptian and Hindu. Romans and Greeks copied it. 
and with the triangle, the top of the pyramid is the portal to the sunlight, S-U-N, in pagan god worship. All pagan worship. The next letter is H, H or H-E, for he, breath, inspiration, value five. He had a little man with his arms raised up, breathing way back. And it always has an opening on the left side. So you always know it's the H because it has air going in and out on the left side. So that's the H, H for heaven. It has a guttural sound of H, heaven, breath, inspiration, or revelation. The sixth letter is for man, nail, or tent peg. And it has no edge on the back of it. See, and this is shorter. For V or W, Vav or Wa, the value of six. So three of these is World Wide Web, 666, because three of these are in a W. Six. Six, six, the number of man. The next letter is Zayin. The I is pronounced like an E. This is for the letter Z, which looks like a seven. And here's what it looked like 2,000 years ago, was like a sword or a plow is what the old picture was. And now it's generated into this picture it sort of looks like the number seven on there. This is for the letter Chet. Chet, pronounced like in Bach, Bach, C-H. You have to roll your back of your tongue. And this is what it looked like early 2000 BC. And it was like a ladder, a hedge of protection, a fence separating. It's a separation, a hedge of protection separating. It's also closed here, so you know that it's not the, the H because it's closed up here on the left. It's not open, and it's pronounced Chet. Chet has the numeric value of 8. Tet. Tet, T-E-T. -E Sometimes it's T-E-T-H. It can be a T or a T E, has the number value of nine, and it had like looked like a basket 2,000 years ago. And you can remember it because it looks like a baby in the womb. If you did a sonogram of a baby, this looks like a baby in the womb, which is nine months. So you can remember in its protection, like all surrounded with protection. Nine means protection, tet means protection. This is the power letter, Yod, Yud. It's pronounced Yod, like Y-U-D, Yod. And it is sometimes an I or a Y. The Y is a consonant in Hebrew, not a vowel. It has the value of 10, the power value of 10. Looks like David's slingshot. And it's the Yod, the right arm of God, the right arm of power. Exodus 15, 6 the right arm of power. When he's seated at the right hand of God, that just means a power figure. There's not two chairs with around the throne. K for cough, cough. When there's a dot in the center, it's a hard sound of K. When there's no dot, it's a KH. This has the value of 20, so now the value starts going up. Look like a submission to a king's arms with the subject submitting to the king. I always remember it's the holiness unto the Lord, the crown, king, because it looks like the, the crown where they wore the band called holiness to the Lord on a priest. That's how I remember this. this is for king, crown, now without the dot, it's a K-H. So here we are for Kether. So this is a K, holiness unto the Lord, K. The dot in the center makes it a K. No dots, K-H. This is the vowel for E. This is the last letter, the 22nd letter for T. 
H. There's no dots, so it's a TH. If it had a dot, it's just a T. And it has this here with a little foot on it. And then this is longer than a vowel, V-A-V, the V, the sixth letter. This is R for resh, resh, R. It sits out longer at the top. These are all across the line here, and they're all across the line here. And when Isaiah says in 28, the jot and tittle, this is your jot and tittle. The jot and tittle is what they're talking about when it says every word shall pass. So here's the KH with no dot. It sounds like ch, <laughs> Sometimes it's written as CH, but it's supposed to be a KH. KHAF. Sometimes this will be a PH for Phyllis. PH sound, F like in Phyllis. I have 20. At the end of a word, when it's a KH, it looks like this, and this will be below the line. That's why we knew that letter word was an R because it was above, the, it was at the line when it's below the line. At the end of a word only, it will be a KH with no dot, a K with a dot. It's called a soft beat or final letter. This will be the letter at the end of the word on the left side. There's five of them that do this. And it's pronounced soft feet, like F-E-E-T. When you listen to the other videos that I have on YouTube for pronunciation of the letters, I have other videos offered there. If you go to my YouTube channel, it will say soft feet, and it's the final letter. L, Lamed, Lamed, L for Lamed, value of 30. When they write a 30, because the Hebrew does not, language doesn't have digits for numbers, they have letters for numbers. So when they write the number 30, they will use the Lamed, which is the shepherd's crook. The shepherd's crook for shepherd or discipleship. Your shofar. This is the shepherd's crook, the shepherd. M for water, mem. This is your mem. Has a value of 40. It used to look like water. And this is an M, the letter M, mem for water, covering. At the end of a word, it's going at the left side on the end of the word. It's going to look like this with a square box closed up. That's for the letter M. It's still an M. That's the mem soft feet or final letter. Soft feet or final letter for M, mem. Noon. It's spelled none, but it's pronounced noon. This is for the letter N. N has the value of 50. This is your heir or your seed for continuing life. Heir, H-E-I-R, for continuing life. The final or soft feet letter for N, noon, looks like this. And this will be below the line when it's at the end of the word on the left of a word, the left side. It is called a soft feet or a final letter for the letter N, and it will be longer than the Zayin. This is always at the end of a word. The next letter is Samek, S. This is not an O, it is an S or C, pronounced Samech. It's an S or C with the value of 60 for support, or stone, or a rock. And it's an S, S, not an O. Here's an example for S, Sila, Sila. It'll be a soft C sound. It's an S or a soft C. So for the word Sela, Sela, for this H5553, and it is in the Bible 60 times in the Old Testament, it is C E L A an apostrophe. The Ayin is always for a mark, an apostrophe, 
That's how it will always look in the Hebrew word. And this is the word for rock. It's a masculine noun, and it stands for the city of Petra, Peter the rock. Selah, a stronghold or a stone. Here it is used in scripture, Psalm 18.2. The Lord is my rock, H5553, and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. So when you see the word salvation, it is Yeshua in Hebrew, which is a verb, not a proper noun. That is not his name. This is what he does. He's saving us. Yeshua is not the name of the Lord in Hebrew. That's for the verb salvation. And this word rock here, if you compare it to Numbers 20 and 8, where the water came out of the rock, compared to Acts chapter 2, where the living water came out of the rock. Here's another word for the word rock. T-S, U, because the dot's over here next to the V. So it's U-W, sometimes they put the W in, sometimes they don't. And an R, resh. At the end of the word, you know it's resh because it's all on one line. So you know it's not the K-H or K because it's all on one line. And these are all lined up here at the top. So to steward, and this is in the Bible 78 times, and it ha is the proper noun referring to a deity, a rock referring to a deity. <clears throat> it stands for rock, righteousness, beauty, strength, the mighty one, or sharp. To steward for rock. So if you go to the branch of righteousness in Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, capital B-R-A-N-C-H, shall grow out of his roots. 11, 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Yehovah the I Am. That's the name of the Lord in Hebrew in the Old Testament. That's his only name, I Am, or Lord, which is Yehovah. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. These are the seven spirits of God, which are the jewels in your crown. It is also called the seven eyes and the seven lamps and revelations. It is the art image. So if you go over here to Proverbs chapters 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9, Revelations 5 and 6, then go back to Genesis 126 and 7 and 9, 6 and 2, 9, and you can see what the word O-U-R means. He is the image of light. He is the light. And we are the reflection of that image. This does not refer to three people or three persons or God as three persons. That's totally wrong. Deuteronomy 32.3, I will show you singular tense, not plural. In the Old Testament, the Lord was one, not three people. Because I, singular, will publish the name of the Lord. The name, not names, the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Not gods, but God. Only one. He, singular, Deuteronomy 32, 4, he is the rock, H6697, his work is perfect for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he, not we, singular. So now when you go to Matthew 28, 19, this confirms it's singular, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, not names, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So what's the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? 1 Corinthians 10, 4. 
They did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock and followed them. And that rock was Christ. So if you look at the capital R-O-C-K, go to Deuteronomy 32 and 4. He is the rock, capital R-O-C-K. That rock is Christ. So what they're telling you is that Jesus is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Singular. Name. These are only titles. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am filled with the Holy Ghost. But I have a name, Minister Gale. So here's the O-U-R image. O-W-R, and remember the W can be a U. O-W-R, O-U-R in Hebrew from Genesis 126. Apostrophe. O R stands for the word to light or shine. So when it said in our image, it meant the image of light, the reflection of light. We were made in his reflection. He is the light and we are a reflection of that light. So it means image or shine. So O U R O W R in Hebrew means light or shine, not three persons. That is incorrect. O-R-E, gold ore, very brilliant, bright, light, gold. So let's go back to Genesis 1:26, And God said, let us make man, the us is in Proverbs, in our image, after our likeness. So the O-U-R, when you read Proverbs, tells you, who was there in the beginning? It was the spirits of God, the image of God. And when you look up the word for our image in Hebrew, all three words are this word in Hebrew, teselem, which is the righteousness of the shepherd over the water. It's talking about his righteousness, the shadow. He was shadowing over the water, an image over the water. So God created man in his his own image, not in our image, his own image. So he went from our image to his own image. The O-U-R stands for light and shining in the light of his image. The righteousness, we are made in his righteousness in the image of God created he, him, Male and female created he them. The image of God is not a person in the Old Testament. It was the word, the light. He created with his words by speaking. So here's another word for rock. This one's only in there two times. Because you can have five, six, seven, eight, ten Hebrew words for one English word. So we were looking up the word rock. So this one is H5554, Selah. Or Selah in English, Selah, the rock, Petra. This is a proper locative noun, not a deity, but a location. So this is city of Peter, Petra, the rock, the city of the rock. So this is S, C, S or C, S in English, C in Hebrew, soft C, E, L, A, and the apostrophe. The A yin is just the mark. This is just a mark, an apostrophe, a yin for the I. Isaiah 16, 1. So here's prophecy. Send ye the lamb to the ruler of the land from Selah, the rock, to the wilderness. John the Baptist came out of the wilderness. Unto the mount of of the daughter of Zion. The daughter of Zion is the bride of Christ, the bride, the church of Jerusalem. The daughter of Zion is Jerusalem. The church is the bride. This was prophecy about sending the land 
lamb to the ruler of the land, from the rock to the wilderness, unto the bride of Christ, the church. And where did he go? When Peter was to feed the lambs, his sheep, Peter had the keys. Peter was the one that was to feed the Jews the new covenant plan of salvation in the book of Acts. Not Matthew, not Paul, but Peter was given the keys to the kingdom of God. How to be born again, 16, 16 through 19. And Peter was to feed the lambs. And the rock told him what to say for the new bride, the church of Jerusalem. So now here's another Selah. This is in here 74 times. This one's a verb. This means to lift up your voice to music. Selah, Selah. So here is C, S in English, or C, E, L. This is a different A because it'll be a harder or softer sounding A. Those are vowels. And an H. We know it's H because it has the breath. H, the wind. The opening here is the fifth letter, so it's an H. It's an open H. C E L A H. Say la. Lift up your voice to music. And then I got to thinking, what does this look like in music? What letter does that look like in music? High and lift it up. The treble clef, which is on the right hand of the piano and the higher notes. This is the bass clef, which is lower, but this is the higher notes lifted up on the piano. This is a lamed, the treble clef in music is from the Hebrew lamed. Here's the treble clef. So here's a scripture to go with it. Psalms 2410 for this selah, which is H5542. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. He, singular, is the king of glory. Selah, to lift up your voice in praise and music. So this selah means to lift up your voice in praise and music. It's a verb. Ayin, this is the 16th letter. It's just written as a mark or an apostrophe. It looks like an Egyptian I. It has the value of 70. It's also the third I in your pagan religions. It used to look like an I. Now they made it this way, but it does look like an Egyptian I. E Y E. Pay, P, hard P, has a value of 80. With the dot in the middle, it is a hard sound for P for the mouth. That's what it used to look like. Without the dot, it's a PH or an F sound. Fe, written either way. PH like Phyllis, sound of F. It has a value of 80. Without the dot, this is a PH or an F. This shows the four letters together for P, H, and P, and F. At the final, Sophit final, at the end of a word, it's going to look like this, and it falls below the line going across. It will always be below the line, and the jot and tittle will be here. The tittle will be at the tops, equal across all the way. That's how you can tell it's the final letter. This one's for the P, the soft beat or final letter will have a dot in it. This falls below the line and this will be equal across the top here. It always falls below the line when it's a final or soft beat letter. Without the dot, it's a P, H, or F. Spelled any way here, but it's a P, H, or F. And this is always a hard P. No matter which one it is, it's always going to be a hard P with the dot in it. This is the branch of righteousness. Here's your tree of life where the branch is coming out of the side. For TZ or TS, Tasadi, 
And in Psalm 119, King James, it's T-A-S-T-S-A-D-D-I-E. It can have different ways of spelling it, but it's always for the T-S or T-Z for your journey, for your path of life. The branch of righteousness, tree of life. So here's the letters together. So here's your branch coming out of the side. And here's the tree. It looks like a tree when it's the final at the end of a word. A final or soft feet at the end of the word. And this is your branch of righteousness, Isaiah 11, 2. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Capital B-R-A-N-C-H for 11, 1. Isaiah 11, 2. And the Spirit of the Lord which is Jehovah, the I am, the Lord, shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord are your seven spirits of God, the seven eyes, the seven lamps. When you go read Proverbs 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, Revelations 5, 6, then go back to Genesis 1, 26, 27, 9, 6, and Genesis 2, 9, you will see that the image is not three men, but the our image is the seven spirits of God, which are the jewels in your crown that were there in the beginning. Here's the Tassadi here, the final Safid at the end. The Tassadi, T-S or T-Z, the final letter. This is the letter Q for queen, bride, or woman. It has the value of 100. It's for Q-O-F. Sometimes it's Q-O-P-H. And this is what it looked like originally. The symbol for the Egyptian Anka for women or the Mary's beads in the Catholic Church. Symbol for the woman, the queen of heaven. Now it is just the Q. And Jeremiah is the queen of heaven. That is pagan worship. Q is for woman, the queen of heaven, or bride of Christ, which is the original church in the book of Acts. In Acts 34 AD is the bride of Christ, which was the original Jewish church. Then the Gentiles were adopted in in chapter 10 in the book of Acts. The Catholic Church in 325 AD took the Bride of Christ and turned it into Mary for worship to Mary instead of God in Revelations 12. So it's the mark of the beast, the queen, the sun goddess, the 19th letter. So they changed it to this. The church was this, the Bride of Christ, Zion, the Bride of Zion and turned it into a Catholic pagan worship. So here you see where they worship Mary, this goddess of the sunlight instead of God. And on the back of the robe, they have IHS, which stands for Iesus Homo and Salvatore, Jesus the Savior Man. So they consider this man was given the keys, Peter transferred keys to him, that he thinks he is Jesus, the Savior of men. All the priests in the Catholic Church think that they are Jesus. They think that they are the sons of God, Jesus, saviors of men. That's why you have to go and confess to them in little black booths. The Queen of Heaven Trinity came from there, the sun on the horizon, the spirit of the Antichrist. And then when you turn it upside down to match the Shiva, where it came from, the Hinduism is where it came from, because remember, this is upside down worship. Upside down worship. So when you turn it right side up, it stands for Shiva, the upside down cross of Lucifer, and this is the way it is right side up. And the three goddess, three persons, which came from Trimurti, and it is the god of chaos and destruction. All about time. Pagan worship, the entire Catholic Church, with the doctrine of Trinity of God as three persons, is paganism, and it is the spirit of Antichrist. So here's the Queen of Heaven, Trinity, 
This is the mother of lies. Catholicism in 325 AD brought the church into the Dark Ages until the 1500s when Martin Luther brought the church out, considered the Age of Light and Reformation. So you can see the, the beads hanging down matches the Egyptian Anka for the symbol of peace. They were good with peace treaties. They create a lot of chaos in the name of peace treaty, which is your Antichrist spirit. 53 chants to Mary for Allah, which we learned in the other book that the five and the three is the signature for Allah. And here's your Egyptian Anka, the worship to the sun god, cobras, all pagan worship, all pagan worship to this goddess of sunlight. And Lucifer is the angel of light, the sun on the horizon, the sun on the horizon, the back of the Pope's robe. Here's the Vatican with the same symbol. Walmart has the same symbol. Here's your astrolabe and the compass. It's all about time. The Freemasons, it's all wrapped in. The flags have the worship to the woman symbol. There it is right there. The lingam and yoni. This is the lingam and the yoni. All Hinduism. Hinduism, Egyptian. They all copied each other. It's all pagan worship. R, resh, R. Is to think of a fist here, not a head. I would think of a fist because it's a little bit longer than the man, the VAV. The, v -A -V. the sixth letter comes out a little longer. So ruling man, that's the way I consider it and try to remember it that way. It's a ruling man, a ruler, reigning, R-E-I-G-N. This is for the letter she, S-H, S-H, S-H-I, 300. The dots on the right, here's a signature for Allah. Chaos, teeth, biting, chaos, destruction. It's the W today. And the Romans and the Greeks took the 21st letter and turned it into the 23rd letter, changing the Hebrew alphabet, changing the Bible, which adds plagues to them. And that puts a dot on the right side. This is 6, 6, 6. Bob, Bob, Bob. World Wide Web. Added to the word, they changed God's alphabet. This is a she. When the dots on the left, it's for sin. 23rd letter in the Greek Roman alphabet. A lot of evil and demonic events happen on 921 to 923. It's one of Satan's big event days on the calendar. So when it's on the left, it stands for seen, S-I-N, S-I-S. Sometimes it's just an S. The dots are on the left. The last letter, the 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Tav, T. When the dot's there, it's a T. It has a little foot, so you, just know, you know it's not a C-H. It has a foot. It used to look like a cross. They got rid of the cross, turned it into an X, marks the spot, and made it into this shape here like a door with a foot on it. 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. There are also 22 books in the book of Revelations. End, sign, seal, cross. Without the dot, it's a TH. Value 400. Without the dot, it's a TH. The last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And in Psalm 119. This is the letter for hope. Tikva, the word for hope. So let's practice with the word. Letters is T because it has a dot in it with a little foot. So that's a T. I. Q. This is a break in the syllable. B. A. H. You know it's an H because it's open on the left. Air can go in and out, so you know it's the H. Let's practice again. So you go down and up. So T, I, Q, V, A, H. Opening here on the left makes it an H. 
This only means a syllable separation. It's for the word tikva, which stands for hope. It's a feminine noun. It's in the Bible 34 times. In the Strong's Concordance, H8615. Tikva. Here's a word for shalom. Shalom. Start on the right. It has a dot on the right. So it's an S-H, A, L, shepherd's crook, O, because the dot's above it, over the V, makes it an O now. Sometimes they'll put O-W in the word. And an M, there's the final or soft feet letter for M, squared off here at the bottom. Shalom, S-H, A, L, O, any dot above a letter, except this one. A dot over there is an O, we'll follow it, and an M, shalom for peace, shalom. So then you ask the Lord, because these are living words, you ask him, why did he put chaos? I asked him, why did you put the letter for chaos and destruction in a word for peace? And this is what the Lord laid on my heart. The shepherd calms the storm. Here's your storm, the shepherd, the man shepherd, and an M. So remember when Jesus was in the boat and the big storm came up and they woke him up and he went out and said, peace to the storm. So you have the shepherd man calms the water and the storm, the storm over the water. That's how the word is a living word. Each letter means something. The shepherd calms the storm over the water. Peace. Words of the Week in Hebrew, Week 12. We are going to study the 11th letter, Kaf, Chaf, or Chaf. Hi, this is Minister Gail. This is Week 12 of the Hebrew class, Words of the Week. We're going to cover the letters, Kaf and Chaf. The letter K is spelled in Hebrew with this character and a dot. KH has no dot. The final sofit falls below the line. It has a value of 20. It is the palm of the hand to submit. It is where you, it looks like a crown. It looks like a crown. But it's submission to the crown, submitting to the crown, holiness unto the Lord. So it will be written with a K, K-H, or K-E. It's the 11th letter, but it has the value of 20. And it means to submit, submit to the crown, palm, bow down, subject to. It looked like a little hand or it could be people submitting to the arms of a king, early 2000 BC, and now it looks just like this shape today, like a palm, an open palm, or a crown for submission. If you go to your Psalm 119 in any Bible, go to verses 81 to 88, they're set up in eight sections each. This is the alphabet, and it will have C-A-P-H. It's supposed to be K-A-P-H in the King James Version. And each verse will start with the Hebrew letter Chaf. If you go to this video, which I have available on YouTube and Facebook, and it will give the entire lesson in this video. Kaf, 
Huff, huff, K, and it sounds like an AF. This is for the letter K with the dot in there, value of 20. Without the dot, it's H, H, K, H. Sometimes they put the H in the word, sometimes they don't. This is still a K, sound K. The final or soft feet letter at the end of the word for K is written like this for the K, and this is for the KH. At the end of a word, if it ends with a K or KH, it will be written like this. The meaning of cough. Submission to the mouth. The ruling mouth, when you submit to the ruling mouth. This is P, H, huff, K, A, P, H, huff. Sound alike. You have the eighth letter, which is huff, and you have the K letter, which is huff. These both sound alike. This is the eighth letter for C, H, closed H. This is the letter for K, H, sometimes K. You have lookalikes for the final soft feet, KH. You have Dilep D, which is shorter and also has a header over here, and Resh. These both fall on the line. The KH or K soft feet will always fall below the line. Here's more lookalikes for the KH. This is in the beginning of the word or middle. So you have the K, H, or K, huff, but this is going to be, sounds like vet, but written as a B is in vet. This is the second letter for vet. This is the 11th letter for K, H. Notice the difference in the style. This is the second letter for house or home. This is to submit to the palm of the hand. If you go to HebrewForChristians.com and you want to learn how to write the letters, this has a writing practice PDF file that you can download and practice on your own. Here's for the final or saw feet. Chaf, they also have a PDF file that you can download and practice on your own. See, it does have like the header on there, but it's going to fall below the line, so then you know it's a final or saw feet and not the D for the door. The palm of the hand. K or KH. So here's where you bow or submit, where his arms are over the subject, where you submit to the royalty of the crown. There's another one where he's bowing down and submitting to the royalty, submitting. The palm of the hand is down. Submit. The reason I call it a crown, because the word for crown is kether, K-E-T-H-E-R, K-E-T-H-E-R. See, this is right on the same line, so you know that's an R and not a final or soft feet KH. They're all on the same line here, and the jot tittle is all on the same line up here. I'm now adding the numeric value for each letter so that you can, if you want to do the geomantria, Hebrew has all their letters have a value, a numeric value. When they write let numbers, they write a letter for the number. So you can start getting used to the number for each letter so you can do their numbers. They do not use digits. And the value for crown is 620. This is where I get the crown from, the shape to help me remember this looks like the holiness unto the Lord, 
for crown, submitting to the king, submission. So here's your K with the dot, KH with no dot, and the holiness unto the Lord was the crown that was worn, the band that was worn on the priestly hat. So here it shows the band. So holiness unto the Lord, submitting to God is holiness. If you go to the YouTube and look at this link here, a video on the full armor of God by Mark Biltz. Here's the link. It has a very good description of the priestly garments and shows Hebrew and for the value of the 60 for the rock coming up. It'll give you a very good explanation in the Hebrew, the difference between a Roman armor of God and a priestly armor of God. It's a very, very good video on YouTube. Here's where the palm of the hand, chaf, chaf, chaf. Submitting, bow down to the image, the golden image in the book of Revelations and all throughout the Old Testament. And today there's many teachings that have people bow to statues across the world in a lot of countries, bowing and worshiping Mary and other gods rather than the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the Tanakh, which is your Old Testament, and the King James Version of the Old Testament equals 99% correct of the Hebrew Tanakh that they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Qumran Caves they found that the King James Version matched the Old Tanakh Hebrew literature 99%. Now the books are in three sections. There's the same number of books, 39 in the Tanakh, but the King James Version just has a different order, but the exact same books, exact same 39, just in a different order. That's the only difference. So the Hebrew Bible is called the Tanakh. Tanakh. So the T, the Mikra, is the can canonical collection of Hebrew scripture, which is also the textual source for the Christian Old Testament. And the Tanakh is the abbreviation for T, E, or T, A, N, A, K-H or C-H, K-H, the Ketuvim, because there's three. There are the Torah, the Nevi'im, and the Ketuvim. Those are the three sections in the Tanakh. You have the teachings of the law, the prophets, old and new are combined together, the older and the larger and smaller prophets, larger books and smaller books. And then the writings, the Ketuvim has the Psalms and the Proverbs, etc. And the Nuvim, Nuvim. Kafa, Kafa, Kafa. Bow down, to bow down. So this is our first Hebrew word. If you look up in the blueletterbible.org, is my best reference, H3721, and it will have the words for bow down. Remember, you can have one English word and lots of Hebrew words. So this is in there five times. It's also good to see that it's a verb. Look up your grammar. So it's K, A, there's the vowel, A, P, H, because there's no dot, A, P, H, final. Or soft feet. Remember, this is below the line, so it's the final or soft feet. These are both for P and P for the mouth. Submit to the mouth. Bow down. And here's your numeric value for each letter. So the root word for cough is H3709. 
So H3709, cough to submit, is in there 128 times. It's a feminine noun for the spelling for cough. K A P H, the final or soft feet, P H for mouth. Submit to the mouth, bow down. You have the protection if you're in the palm of his hands, the cusp of God's hands. Numeric value 100. It's the Holy Ghost power in the palm of the hand. The palm of the hand. When your hand is in his hand, he is protecting you and guiding you and leading you. The Lord Jesus Christ. There's healing light in our hands. Remember the power? The yod was the power of the right arm of God. The power comes down. It's anointing in your hands. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you can use that power better. The palm of the hand. Submitting to the Lord. Remember, the Lord is just a spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ right now it's just a spirit, the Holy Spirit, like he was in the beginning. He was the Word. He was not a father until he made a son in John 1. The only begotten Son of the Father, capital F-A-T-H-E-R. And the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. Therefore, they're not persons, three persons, because two men cannot make one baby. The Holy Spirit and the Father are not persons. Now, there is a Jewish talisman amulet called the Hamsa, which is hanging in the Jewish houses in Israel. It's the third eye. This is a demonic, demonic and satanic amulet to ward off evil spirits. Revelations 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And that's going to be the Antichrist. A man that's going to be risen up on this earth, the Antichrist, he is going to do signs and wonders, and he's part of this Hamsa Third Eye Antichrist movement. Revelations 13, 16. And he causeth all, the Antichrist, this man, this false Messiah, the false Messiah, will cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six, 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 six. And the vaccine coming up for the COVID virus is also a mark of the beast. The vaccine is a mark of the beast. This Hamsa comes from your Kabbalah. The Kabbalah was created of a Jewish sect in the year 259 AD because they could not understand Jesus. They thought he was a magician and the miracles were magic tricks. So this is all created from the Kabbalah which is a Jewish group that worships Allah, Kaaba to Allah. They created this talisman, this amulet, this false idolatry, this pagan amulet to wear around people's necks and in their homes. This is nothing but satanic and paganism. See, all these children have been deceived that that's going to protect them. Instead of being filled with the Holy Ghost to baptize in Jesus' name, as the first Jews did in the book of Acts, chapter 2, all the first Jews, 3,120 Jewish people, 
were baptized in the Lord Jesus Christ's name and filled with the Holy Ghost with speaking in unknown tongues. It was to the Jew first, and Peter was Jewish, and Paul was a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi. Both Jewish apostles and disciples of Christ commanded the same doctrine for salvation and to protect us from the enemy and from plagues. Not this. This is nothing but a piece of junk. The Hebrew words of the week for K and KH. Here's a good one. Kobed, written as Kobed, but pronounced COVID in English. Amazing. So you have K O, the dot. V pronounces a V. E D pronounced COVID, and it means heavy or grievous, great in number. Grievous in great number. A heaviness. The plague of COVID is a heaviness for those who are disobedient to his word for adding and changing it in Revelations 22, 18 and 19, Deuteronomy 28. When you rebel against the word of God, the book of Acts is the New Testament of salvation. Then the plagues come for disobedience. It is a curse. Kala, Kala, K. A L A H, open H, breath or air. This is for the bride, the bride. Your Jewish congregation or church becomes a member of the congregation and church. They are complete or perfect. The bride is the executress of the will. So your Bible, your Tanakh in the New Testament is the will of God. It is a will by the testator. Jesus died on the cross and he wrote a will, the New Testament, the New Covenant, the last testament, Hebrews 9. He's the testator of the last will and testament of God. And when you have a trust set up, it's a fiduciary. A fiduciary, which is a will, a revocable trust. A will set up, which is the New Testament. The New Testament Bible is a will set up, written in the name of Jesus Christ. You can only have a will written in one person's name. Therefore, God cannot be three persons, or you would have three books, three wills written if each of them were a person because a will can only be written in the name of one person, one testator. And his name is on Matthew page one and it's in there, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his last will and testament of one person. The fiduciary is a person who holds a legal or ethical relationship of trust with one or more parties, who prudently takes care of assets or benefits for another person involving trust, especially with regard to the relationship between a trustee and a beneficiary. We are the beneficiaries of the will of the Lord Jesus Christ, held or given in trust, bound ethically to act in another's best interest. So when Peter and Paul commands us to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Acts, they are bound to give you and to act it in your best interest. The executor, who is the bride of Christ, also called the personal representative, a woman, the bride is sometimes called an executrist, an individual trust that settles the estate of a testator according to the terms of the will. And the terms of the will start in Acts chapter one after Jesus died on the cross. A will cannot start before someone dies. A will starts after he dies. Bacher, Bacher, Bacher. B, because the dot's in the B. A, and this should be K-H, but I looked in four Strong's Concordance. This is still written as a K, but it's pronounced Cher, A, 
far. Remember, it's above the line, so it's not all fine or soft feet. The hair, firstborn, new fruit, firstling, the first child. So this is the house of submission to the ruler, the firstborn. The house of submission to the ruler, the firstborn. So when you take your house, you, you are a house. You are the keeper of a house. Your temple is the body. When you submit to the ruler in John 3 through 8, you become born again of the Father, who's the Lord Jesus Christ is his name, in the Spirit, capital S, P-I-R-I-T. You become born again, and you have a new Father. You break every curse off of you. Every genetic curse is broken. And when you become born again, Bacher, you have a new father and you will speak in an unknown tongue. First, first fruit, Bicher, 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 The I is pronounced like an E, B, I, K, double K. U W. So the V, the V, the sixth letter turns into U W. It's not a V or a W. It's a U when the dots to the left and an R. The cure, be cure, be cure. First fruits, your tithings. Jesus was the first fruit at Passover, the first lamb, the lamb of sacrifice. Only Jesus died on that cross for your sin. Not Muhammad, not Allah, not Mary, not Shiva, no one else. The Holy Ghost didn't die. The Father did not die. Only Jesus was the Lamb that died for your sins. Therefore, you have to have his name to remove your sin. The blessing. Barach, Baracha, Baracha. In the priestly blessing, we're going to learn the priestly blessing. And in there, they have the word baracha. B, E, R, A, K. This should be a K-H, but they pronounce it with a K. But it's pronounced baracha. A, H, open H. The blessing this is the Holy Ghost or air, heaven, submitting to the royal house. So the heavenly, when you submit to the heavenly house, you will be blessed. A blessing pours out by submission to heaven, to the Lord. Barach, Barach, bless or kneel, B-A-R-A-K, and this is a final or soft beat K because it falls below the line, and these are both an A, just remember one of them is a hard A, one's a soft A, but they all are pronounced with the short A, ah, Barach, A, ah, like aqua. Both an A, just different ways of the sound to it. Barach, bless, kneel, salute. Two, two, two. Lamb, kebs, 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 eh, eh, k, e, b, written as a b, but pronounced as a v, e, and s. Kevs, Kevs is lamb. Submission to the house of sin. The lamb was sacrificed for all of our sins. So the lamb is a sacrifice for sin. Submitting to the house of God. Cathar, Cathar, compass or surround, K-A-T-H, because there's no dot, 
Here's a foot there, so it's the 22nd letter, value of 400, TH, A, R, this stays on the line, so you know it's not a final or soft B, K, it is just an R. Cathar, compass, surround, compass, like a compass, surrounding. A wall, kethal, kethal, K, E, T, H, no dot, A, L, Lamed, L. So you have submission, and the TH means last or sealed, and this is shepherd staff. That's your shepherd staff. Teaching, shepherd staff. Submitting to the last, it's the last, the last covenant, you're sealed. It's the shepherd seal. So then there's a wall of protection. When you submit, to the shepherd, the last shepherd, the last seal is the Lord Jesus Christ. You have a wall of protection. To remember or think, Zachar, Zachar. Now remember, they sometimes put the dot, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they put the H, sometimes they don't. So without that would be Zachar. When you hear blueletterbible.org, the pronunciation, It'll sound Zachar, Zachar, Z A K or K H A R. The sword, which is the word, submitting to the ruler. The sword is the word. Remember, think on this word. Think on this word. Here's the letter for word, the sword of the spirit, Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Remembrance or memorial. So remember, you have 23 times. You have to look at the number and the grammatical meaning. Z, zeker, zeker. Now we have E, Z, E, K, E, R. So the vowels just changed in there. The vowels changed the word. Remembrance or memorial, zakher, zakher, z k h r. The vowels don't have any meaning to them, only the consonants. Y is a consonant, the yod is a consonant in Hebrew, and there is no j in Hebrew. Cherub, cherub, cherub. So we say cherub, but it's cherub, cherub, K, E, R, U. The V turns into a U when there's a dot to the left. U, W, U, like in blue. And B, this will be pronounced as a V, actually, if there's no dot. Keruv, keruv, keruv. Not cherub, but cherub. This should be pronounced as a V if there's no dot. That's in there 91 times. Here's for blessing. Cherub. Cherub. This one's in there two times. K. R. U. V. Or V. Cherub, that's the proper name, a blessing. Queen, remember you can type in queen and get many different Hebrew words for the word queen. When you go to blueletterbible.org, the predominant red on the left will be the predominant first word there in the group for the description. So you look for the queen that's on red at the first when you look it up in blueletterbible.org for this word queen. Melcha, Melcha, 35 times. M, A, L. This is going to be a dividing. Sometimes that's an E. Sometimes it divides the syllable. K, A, 
H, open H. Melcha, melcha. M or covering, water or covering or wipe out. Shepherd teaching, shepherd staff. K for submission, H, revelation, breath, inspiration. So queen now has water in it. When we get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we become the bride of Christ in water. In water, you have to become a bride, an executress of the will, if you follow his will. The shepherd, the covering of the shepherd, submitting to the Holy Ghost. This can be air, heaven, the Holy Ghost. The door over the power. The door over the power, the yod. Huh. Submitting to the Holy Ghost is when we become the queen, the bride of Christ, the church, the Jewish congregation. Angel. This is in there 11 times. Notice the spelling looks the same for queen. So you have to look at the definition. It's in there 11 times. This one is malach. Malach. M A L. And that's dividing the word. That's not an E. Two syllables. This is the mark. A. It's just a mark or an apostrophe. Here's the A is the vowel, and K, final or soft feet, K. So you have water, wipe out or covering, the shepherd's staff teaching, first or strong, and this is for K, it's below the line, submission. So an angel, the covering of the shepherd is the strongest submission. The first submission to the covering of the shepherd were the angels. We came second. So the first submission to the covering of the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God of heaven, the Holy Ghost, the Father, was the angels. Wisdom. Chokhmah. Chokmah. I did look this up for the O. They have it written as an O in four Strong's Concordance, but the vowel underneath is an A. So everything's not set in gold. Chokmah for wisdom. C-H-A or O. K-H. Now they have it with the H. This divides the syllable. It's not an E. That one's dividing the syllable. M. A H wisdom value of seventy three Chokma yoked to God submission to the Lord the covering of the Holy Ghost when you're yoked and submit to the covering of the Holy Ghost heaven, inspiration, revelation, you get wisdom. When you're yoked to him, you have to be filled with his spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, Hebrews 11.1, 1, the evidence of something not seen, can't see a spirit. Then you have faith. The seed of the Holy Ghost is faith. So you have to be yoked to him, John 3 through 8, born again with the seed of faith. And then you get wisdom from the Holy Ghost. To become wise, chachem, chachem, C-H-A-K, this would have an H, K-H or K, it's missing the H, A-M, this is the final or soft beat M for water, wiping out or covering. That's the final or soft beat M, value of 40. So you have CH, the yoke, submitting to the covering. When you're yoked and submit to the covering, you become wise. 
Notice the word for wisdom and wise has this yoke, yoke to God, yoke to his spirit, yoke to the Holy Ghost. The priest, the chief ruler, they still use this word, Kohen, Kohen, Kohen. Kohen is the priest, the Jewish priest. K, O is the dot above, makes it an O. H, E, N. This is a final or soft beat N, falls below the line. So then you know it's an N for noon, for the seed, air, H, E, I, R. So the priest submits when the seed or air, the priests were the third tribe, the Levites of the tribes of Israel, of Jacob. The Levites, Moses and Aaron came from the tribe of the Levites, the third tribe. Jesus comes from the order of Melchizedek, from Judah, the fourth tribe. These were the priests, the ones in charge of all the implements of the tabernacles and the temple. There's 144, there's 12,000 priests. 12,000 priests took care of everything in the temple, to carrying it, to caring for it keeping the lamps lit, anything they had to do with the temple. They were not required to work outside of the church, congregation, or temple. The rest of the tribes had to give tithings to them to help them. So here's the K, H, open H, N, the cedar air. Ransom, bribe, pitch, when they put pitch on the ark. Kofer, Kofer, the pitch that covered the ark when they covered it with pitch. So our word cover comes from Kofer. The original meaning of cover is the Hebrew Kofer. K-O-P-H, there's no dot, E-R. Kofer means cover. He gave a ransom, a covering. The covering, so you have the submission of the mouth to the ruler. The submission of the mouth to the ruler. Jesus, when he sat on the Gethsemane, he bled in prayer. He was to be a ransom for your sins. He became the ransom. And he obeyed the mouth of the Lord. His father, his, the spirit spoke to the flesh Jesus. The flesh of Jesus didn't want to die on that cross, but he submitted to die for our sins. It was the flesh, the son of man, that was the one submitting to the spirit of God who was in him, he had to submit to the Holy Ghost, just like your flesh has to submit to the Holy Ghost. Man is made in three parts, not God. So when Jesus was a man for 33 years, he had a flesh body like we did. He was filled with the Spirit like we are filled with the Spirit, proof when speaking in tongues, capital S-P-I-R-T, our spirit submits to his spirit, and then our mind submits to his will. We are made in the three parts, and we all have a name. His name was Jesus. My name is Minister Gale. But we're the ones made in three, not God. Kafir, kafir, ah, kafar, kafar, atonement, k, a, p, h, a, r, an atonement. This one means atonement, purging your sins, reconciliation, forgiveness. It's a verb. It's in there 102 times. Kafir. Submit to the mouth of the ruler. When you have your conscience submits to the Spirit of God, you get atonement. You are purged. Born again. You break every curse. Every genetic curse, when you would submit to his spirit, 
You will have evidence and proof by speaking in other tongues. Double, kafel, kafel, K-E-P-H-E-L. Submit to the mouth of the shepherd. And when he was in the tomb, when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose up and folded the cloth, the covering, he folded it in double. And there's a saying in the Jewish teachings that when you fold your napkin, it means it's finished. If you just throw your napkin on the table when you've eaten your food, just throw it in a big clump, means you'll be back. But when you fold it in double, means it's finished. There is no other covenant, no other sacrifice of living animals, no more K. Perot, no more Malkot, no more punishment for sin. When he rose from the dead, the last covenant was finished. To fold over, double over, the covering over Jesus was folded over in the tomb. Kafal, K-A-P-H-A-L, Kafal, to fold over. Kafal, Kafal, still we have that covering, that Kafal, the covering, submitting to the word, to speak of the Lord. You become doubled over. To bend, submit to the mouth of the seed, which is the Holy Ghost, the Lord, Jesus Christ. He became that seed from heaven. He was the heir, H-E-I-R. When you submit to the words of the book of Acts, you become an heir of the Christ. Kafen, K A P H A N, Kafen. Submit to the words of the seed. The seed is the Holy Ghost. The seed of faith is the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, both the same thing. And He speaks the words. And when you are blessed and filled with the Holy Ghost, you do speak in another tongue. You speak the words of the Holy Ghost that he gives you. Bow down. Kafaf. K-A-P-H-A-P-H. Bow down. This is also the word for village. Kafar. Kafar. K A P H A R. Notice it's not below the line. Kafar. And when you go to Israel, on the signs in Hebrew, they will have the village of Canaan, the village of whatever, and it's Kafar on the sign. But a lot of times when they speak to you about where something is, a destination, they leave off the K-A and they'll say far. Far. So the signs will have kafar in Hebrew on there. So now you can read a sign in Hebrew. Village. K-A-P-H-A-R. Kafar. The mercy seat has a covering. K-P-O-R-E-T-H. 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 Kapareth, excuse me, Kapareth is the mercy seat. K A P, because now there's a dot. O R E T H, the mercy seat. Kapareth, Kapareth, the covering, submitting to the word of the ruler. And it's the last, he gets the last word. The mercy seat was the seal, the covering, the covenant, 
is the mercy seat. So when that priest submitted to the word of God, when Moses submitted to the word of God, who's the ruling word? Jesus gets the last word. God always has the last word. God's last word. You have the mercy seat, the atonement, the covering, and the cherubims, two cherubims on each side of the mercy seat. And when Mary and the ladies went to the tomb, there was two angels on each side of the rock, the mercy seat where Christ was lying down on, laid on, two angels. So you still had two cherubim, two angels at the mercy seat in the tomb. Kippur, 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 atonement. Yom Kippur is a holiday feast, the day of atonement for the Jewish nations. It was on September 28th, 29th this year. <laughs> Comes from the Hebrew word kafar, kafar for atonement or purge from sin. Because the root word is 3722, which is this one. And Kippur is the day, name of the feast. K-I, which is pronounced like E. P, because the dot now is in there. U-R. Kippur. 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 They will roll the R. And the K is like ch, Kippur, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Yom is for the word day. So this is the covering, the purging, the reconciliation, the forgiveness of sins. When you submit to the word of the ruler, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. No more Malkot, no more Kippuro. Kafen for famine, Kafen, K-A-P-H, because there's no dot, A-N for the seed, air, this is N, it falls below the line, seed or air, H-E-I-R, submitting to the mouth of the seed, famine, if you don't submit, Famine, lack of word, lack of word, caffeine, same thing in here. So you have the land of Canaan, which is in the Bible. Canaan comes from the word Canaan, Canaan, K E N A. This is just a mark, an apostrophe for the I, a yin, a, n, falls below the line, so it's an n for the seed or air, h, e, i, r. Submit to the seed, see the seed, Canaan. Glory and honor, kabod, kabod. Kabod, glory or honor, and it'll be pronounced kabod, kabod, but written bod. K, A, B, but pronounced as a V, kabod, O, because now the dot's above the V, the vav, that's the sixth letter, kabod, and D for door. This is a door. It has on the same line, stays on the same line, so you know that's the door with the header there. So we have submit to the house of the man and the door. Glory, glory. The door, the man at the door is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the door. Echad, the Lord is one. The door is in the word one. One door, Jesus said in 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
He's the door. There's no other way to get to God except through Jesus Christ. So you cannot get through him by Matthew 28, 19. That's only a generic title. That's not his name. You have to go through his name to get to him. Shekinah. 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 Should be Shekinah, really. Not an I would be pronounced as an E. S-H, because the dot's above it. S-H-E-K. Should be K-H. I-Y. I-Y is the power. N is the seed. A. H, the Holy Ghost. Submission to the power of the seed of the Holy Ghost will destroy everything. When you submit to the power of the seed of the Holy Ghost, glory, 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 he has destroyed everything evil in your life. Glory, hallelujah. Now, they use a blue thread in the Talit. The Hasidic Jews use the Talit. There's a certain blue thread taken from violets, the hyacinth. It has to be a certain dye, because remember, they have 613 rules and commandments that no longer need to be used. The Talmud made them up, trying to keep the law, keep you under the law when we are under the time of grace of Jesus Christ who got rid of the law, he fulfilled the law, didn't get rid of it, fulfilled it and put it in your heart. But here's the blue coloring, Tekeleth, T-E-K-H-E-L-E-T-H. This is the blue coloring. This was used in the Old Testament for the blue to be used in the tabernacle. The threads in the tabernacle had to be taken from the hyacinth. Now, you've seen the word jas, jachin, but it's, there's no J in Hebrew. The Roman Catholics took out the power letter of the Yod and replaced it with a J. He will be established, fixed. So Yod, A, K, H, I, Y, I, Y, N for the seed, because now it's below the line. So it's actually pronounced Yachin. Yahin, not Jason or Jason, it's Yahin. Y for power, K H for submit to the power of the seed. He will establish fixed. When you the power of submits to the power of the seed. When your will, your power and your will submit to the power of the seed of the Holy Ghost, you will be established. Fixed and right. This is the teaching I told you to go look for the full armor of God teaching by Mark Biltz. This is the YouTube link. It's a very excellent video explaining the armor of God, comparing Roman armor to the priestly armor. Very excellent teaching in the Hebrew. You are the bride of Jesus Christ. The executress of his last will and testament, he's the testator of the last will and testament, when you obey Acts 2.38. You can be filled with the seed speaking in tongues and be Pentecostal, but until you obey and get washed in the water, buried, your sins are buried and you rise in his name, and the priest, pope, pastor, seals, because remember it's Jewish church, they can have priest or rabbi, if he seals the name of Jesus Christ when he speaks Acts 2.38 over you, then you are given the crown of honor. You are a bride and the executress of the last will, the church and the Jewish congregation. You cannot execute the will as the bride of Christ until you have submitted to his name Acts 2.38 because the church is a fiduciary, a trust fund. And you cannot execute that will unless you are part of the will. You're not the bride. You're not the spouse that can execute his last will and testament. And only a person can have a will or a testament written. So the Holy Ghost was not born. 
no date of birth, nor did the Holy Ghost bleed for your sins. The Father has no date of birth. He was just the Word of God. The Father did not bleed on the cross for your sins. Only one person bled for your sins on the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only person in the entire Bible that is related in divine order of God, created in John 1.1, 1, 1, the Son of Man was created as the Son of God in Mary. The Holy Ghost can't be a person. The Father cannot be a person because two men cannot make one baby and Mary would not remain a virgin. If you hear from the Lord and you hear one voice, as in Acts chapter 9 and 26, when Paul heard the voice of the Lord, he said, Lord, Lord, who art thou? And the Lord answered and said, I am Jesus Christ. I am Jesus Christ. He didn't say us or we or they. He answered in the singular tense for the Lord of the New Testament, the last will and testament written in the name of a person given on Matthew chapter 1, Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, he was the name of the Lord, Jehovah, H3068. All singular tense. That is the end of this section. I have available on my Facebook page, Learning Basic Hebrew Virtual Classroom 2020 by Minister Gail, and you can print out the cards there and laminate them to use for all the classes and teaching on this channel and on Facebook. Use a dry erase marker, not red, and to clean it with the magic sponge white erasers. You can use the white sponges to clean it or with alcohol. See Facebook photo album on the Hebrew page. This is a review of the large alphabet card. Remember we read from right to left. All we need to do is memorize the letter for each picture. We don't need to memorize the picture name that they teach in Hebrew. It's not important for reading. So the Aleph is always a mark or an apostrophe with the number value of one or 1,000. This is for B with a dot, B, house. This means first, this is house, value of two. It also can be written without a dot in the center and that will be pronounced as a V but written as a B in the word. So it's pronounced as a V in Victoria but written as B in the word. It has no dot, still the value of two. G, Gimel, looks like a four inch high heel, value of three. And this is for pride. D, Dalet, D, this is the door, portal or opening, the value of four. H, 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 which is inspiration, breath, or revelation, value of five. V or a W, Vav or Wa, for man or nail, value of six. Zayin, Z, the letter Z for Zayin for the sword or the word of God, value of seven. Chuch, like in Bach. Chuch, C-H, and this is a yoke together with the Lord, I always put in with the Lord. It's a yoking together, value of eight. Tet, T-E, tet. Looks like a baby in the womb. It's the ninth letter. Protection, 
like Moses in the basket. Yud, Yud. This is the power, the right arm of God, the power of God. This is the power letter. It's a Y or an I, always pronounced as an E. Value of 10, the power of 10. Yud. K, Ket, Ket, K. Sometimes it'll be written with a C, but it's supposed to be a K. Sometimes they'll put it as a Q. It's the sound. And it has a dot in the center. Holiness unto the Lord like a crown. Value of 20. <laughs> pronounced just like this one over here, like Chet. But we're going to pronounce this one as Ch. And this looks like a crown here. Holiness to the crown with no dot. Value of 20. This is the final or Safit letter. They will pronounce Safit and it's spelled S-O-F-I-T but pronounced as an E. The final or Safit letter for K looks like this with a dot. K-H with no dot. And this will fall below the line. Notice these are on a line. These are exactly all across here. This is even on the line. This is on a line. These are below the line. So then you know it's the final or Safit and it's not the delect. That's how you can tell it's a little longer. Value of 500. El Lamed, the shepherd's staff. This is the tallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. This will always be above the line. 30. Mem for water, mem. This is open here on the side. Value of 40 for water or covering or wiping away like a flood. This is the final or soft feet M. Has a closed bottom here. Value of 600. N for noon, seed, air, H E I R, continuing the bloodline. Value of 50. Here's the noon, spelled N U N, but it's pronounced noon. And it's a soft feet, the final one. It's below the line. It's always below the line, so you don't confuse it with the V up here. This one's going to be longer and below the line, value of 700. This is S, not an O, S, like in Sally, but a soft C. Sometimes I'll put a C, but it will be a soft C. And value of 60. This is S. A yin for the I, and it's a mark, just like the Aleph. It's a mark also. A yin, it will always be a mark or an apostrophe for the I, value of 70. P for the mouth, P, hard P, value of 80. Without the dot, it's a PH or an F, PH or an F. This is for the mouth, PH like in Phyllis. Here's the final or soft feet. It will fall below the line, a P with a dot, PH with an F, PH with no dot, value of 800. TS or TZ, the branch of righteousness. This is like an Egyptian eye. This looks like a tree, the branch of righteousness. TS or TZ, this is the final or soft feet. At the end of the word, it will look like this. Falls by the line, has like a tree branch. TS or TZ for Tassadi, value 900. The final is 900, the regular letter is 90. Q, sometimes written as a K, but it's supposed to be a Q with the sun on the horizon. The horizon with the sun. Value 100 for the bride or the woman. Q, or female. R for resh. This has a longer top on it here, like a fist, a ruling, reigning, R-E-I-G-N, like a fist. So this one is shorter at the top. For man, and when I say a ruling man, R-U-L-I-N-G, can be R for resh, value of 200 because it's longer at the top. S-H has a dot on the right for the teeth, biting, chaos, destroy, destruction, value of 300. When the dot's on the left, it's an S or an S-I. For sin, a dot in the middle with a little foot over here because the number het. Eighth letter looks like that, but this one has a foot, so it's T for Tav with a dot. Without the dot, it's a TH, both value of 400.
The original Holy Bible was written only in Hebrew and only by Jews, both the Old and the New Testaments. Romans 3, 1. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them, the Jews, were committed the oracles of God concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. The Jews were always called the circumcised in the Bible, and Jesus spoke Hebrew, which is in Acts 26, when he said to Paul, Paul wrote down and recorded that Jesus the Lord spoke to him in Hebrew. Jesus is the Mashiach, the Messiah. He is the one Lord. This shows you the name of Jesus in all the languages. In English, it's the I am. In Latin, it's Jesus. In Greek, it is Iesus. Islam, it's Isa. And therefore, in the list. In Hebrew, the name of the Lord was Yehovah. H3068, which is the Strong's Concordance number. There is no J in Hebrew. The Latin Roman Catholics took four of the Lord's name and took out the Y, replaced it with a J, and put Jehovah in there four times. When you look up the translation, it translates to Jehovah, YHVH, which was the name of the Lord. So the Old Testament, he was just the word, the spoken word, the I am. The Lord is the word of God, the spoken word, the Holy Spirit. Then he had a son in John 1, and he's still the Holy Spirit. And the Father created a son in John 1. There was no father person in the Old Testament anywhere. I have other Hebrew classes available. If you go to the YouTube link, this takes you to beginning, the intro, class one, and all the classes are listed there in a list, a playlist. I have a video available for the Strong's Concordance where you can learn how to use it. And I have this mini book, Learning the Letters in four, five, and six lesson. And all the vowels are discussed thoroughly in Lessons 4, 5, and 6 with this book. These are embedded in the lessons. They're not separate videos. Thank you very much, and this is Minister Gale. I have available on Facebook at Learning Basic Hebrew Virtual Class from 2020, and on YouTube if you go to Minister Gale, Strong's Concordance on Google search. You can find it immediately. And I have how to use the Strong's Concordance online and not have to use the paper book anymore. And I have three excellent sources of Strong's Concordance lookup, how to look up every word in Hebrew and Greek. And it has a quick reference to each scripture that uses those words. Very easy to use. It's about a 30 minute lesson, how to add it to your cell phone laptop, PC, and your tablet. I have other classes available also on YouTube. I have Jesus is the Hope of Salvation, Water Baptism, and the rest of the sessions for my learning Hebrew in 22 days. Also, I have available a video on how to receive the Holy Ghost for Jew and Gentile, if you don't have the Holy Ghost baptism, I have videos to show you how to get it. Please subscribe and click the alert bell to be notified when each class is uploaded to the YouTube channel. If you go to Google search and type in Minister Gale Learning Hebrew, it will go to the top of the page on your laptop or cell phone in Google search. It, this class is also available on Facebook on Learning Hebrew Virtual Classroom 
2020. These are available both on YouTube and on Facebook. Thank you very much. This is Minister Gale.